So my name's Sam. Um, so I head up the industrial automation segment of Navtech. So I've been with the company for, for three years. I've got an engineering background and we, we, we specialize in helping industrial clients access the benefits of our technology. And we work across many industries. So we work across marine, mining, rail, logistics and ports. So Navtech as a company has been around for 20 years. We've got um, you know, deep experience in developing and deploying radar solutions into mission critical applications. And really we're well known for our performance and reliability. And so what I want to talk about today is I want to discuss the latest technology trend um, around high resolution uh, W-band radar and, and how it can be applicable to ship designers and ship builders. And through the presentation, I want to explore the barriers to autonomous shipping. I want to go through some of the challenges in congested waterways and then give a bit of an overview of traditional sensor limitations. And I want to go and showcase how high resolution radar um, is enhancing the perception systems and ultimately enabling real world benefits for uh, vessels today, unlocking the future of autonomy. So. So I want to start with the benefits of autonomous shipping and what is driving the industry in this direction. So some of the some of the kind of drivers are around kind of lower costs. So fully autonomous vessels eliminate the need for crew accommodation, safety equipment, air conditioning, um, bridge infrastructure. And this reduction on board facilities really translates to significant cost savings during construction, the design and operation of the vessels. Uh, we can reduce the operational costs, so both fully autonomous and automated vessels offer lower operational costs as crew on board can be reduced or entirely replaced by onshore crews supporting multiple vessels simultaneously. So this optimization can enhance efficiency and cost effectiveness in marine uh, operations. Obviously, there's big safety improvements, so autonomous ships can offer significant safety benefits by minimizing the risk of human error, which currently accounts for about 75% of all maritime incidents. So common causes such as fatigue and attention deficits are eliminated, so there's no real need for crew ch changes. And additionally, autonomous vessels can adapt to slower speeds, they can conserve energy and fuel, and overall this can contribute to safer navigation. And then lastly, really, there's uh, the appeal to younger generations. So with the increasing perception of traditional seafaring roles as being unattractive, autonomous vessels offer um, an alternative that allows younger generations to control and monitor vessels from shore, while at the same time enjoying better work-life balances. And so this is particularly crucial given the forecasted global shortages of 150,000 seafarer officers by 2025. So autonomy is the future and that is the direction uh, and, and semi-autonomous uh, operations will be a stepping stone towards that. But currently it's stuck in what some people are calling pilot purgatory. So this means that autonomous systems are limited to very specific environments or short timeframes. Um, so I want to talk through some of the main barriers uh, around kind of the widespread adoption of autonomy. And these are really down to things like certification and sensor uh, quality. So certification processes need to be navigated and the quality of sensor data feeding autonomous systems needs improving. So firstly, just to kind of not the certification uh, one first, so certification significantly impacts how quickly aut autonomy can be adopted. So we're already seeing the impact that certification or regulation is having on the adoption of road autonomous vehicles. So in maritime, progress is being made and Maritime UK recently released an industry code of practice for maritime um, autonomous ships, but more is needed as, the, as we go through the, through the next couple of years. However, on sensor quality, more, more, more really is needed around this. So the quality of the, data, of the data into a system really determines the quality of the decision being made by the system. So really, the effectiveness of autonomous systems heavily relies on the quality of the sensor input. So improvements in sensor technology are, in, are required to allow autonomous systems to be widely deployed into a wide set of environments um, and to extend the deployment timelines for which these systems can work in. So most pilots are still performed in calm, you know, some of these pictures on, on here. So calm, enclosed waters, heavily monitored and, all, and, and typically in all sunny weather. So we've seen this trend in Southern California. So a lot of the autonomous vehicle uh, testing and where the dream of autonomous road vehicles really came from perpetual blue skies of California. Um, however, when they when these systems were then deployed into different domains, so at night or in harsh weather conditions, the commercial viability of the endeavor has kind of tripped over and we're kind of seeing the bursting of that, that bubble at the moment. So for the widespread de deployment of autonomous systems, higher levels of assurance are required in various domains and overcoming these challenges is essential for autonomy to become commercially viable and sensors play a really key part of this. 
So 60% of all maritime accidents happen within ports and harbours. So there's a real, a real world benefit today of, of sensors supporting and semi-autonomous uh, system supporting operators in and around the, these water. So, so I want to just touch on some of the challenges that uh, challenging conditions that pushes today's sensors in these environments. So the first one is the detection of small vessels. So the absence of small vessels for like kayakers or leisure craft for, from AIS poses significant challenge due to the unplanned journeys, inexperienced operators and difficult dif and the, the fact that it's difficult to detect them and predict their, their motions. Secondly, the congestion and infrastructure that you have around waterways, uh, things like bridges, locks, it really nece uh, necessitates um, stringent positioning and detection uh, requirements, and especially in fogging conditions, demanding centimeter level positioning and fast detection capabilities. Um, GPS uh, denied zones, so navigating under bridges and close to infrastructure often results in GPS denied zones, leading to unreliable positioning precisely when you need it most, so i.e. passing under a bridge or, or near another vehicle. And then lastly, the spoofing effect. So spoofing within GPS is, is becoming more prevalent. So the cost of the, the, the jamming technology is becoming like more low cost. Um, which is posing a significant effect. So we're at Navtech, we're starting to hear uh, stories of container ports being completely GPS blocked for, for days at a time. Um, and the re it really highlights the need for additional robust sensing technology to counter some of these risks. So with these problems in mind, I wanna just explore uh, some of the sensors available to vessel operators and how radar uh, has a track record within the marine environment for navigation. So radar has a long-standing track record in marine uh, in the marine industry through a combination of its reliability in all weather and lighting conditions, its ability to detect objects at long range, which means it can it enhances situational awareness for safe navigation, and it requires minimal or no cleaning or maintenance, reducing the operational cost and, and downtime. So these qualities of radar has really mean that it's a cornerstone to uh, safe navigation for vessels in, in, in waterways, and also is why it's applied in things like aviation and, 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 the, and the defense industry as well. So with that being said, though, there is a shift to with the shift towards autonomy, there is also a shift in the in the requirements around high resolution imaging and the high resolution radar potentially is a bridge can bridge that gap and fill a gap within the current sensor suite so i'll just give a bit of background to what's on the screen so this is the this data was taken from a trial that navtech did down in, down in plymouth last summer so on the left hand side of of the image you can see the uh, above the wheelhouse of, of the vessel the radars are in with the white top and the blue bottom those are our 77 gigahertz radars that we produce at navtech and what we were doing is we were doing some benchmarking trials looking at how our radar performed against a traditional uh, ship radar um, so we've got 20 years of experience in, in deploying as i say the 77 gigahertz radars and operating at that higher frequency allows us to have much higher resolution and that particular means that we can capture intricate details of the environment so things like small objects and kayakers we can we can we can pick up on but you can also think see things like on the on the bottom sides of the image the jetty and and some of the vessels on the left become more clear than they do on a traditional um, radar with our radar also operating at that frequency and the combination of it being an fmcw radar we don't have a blind spot so again we address some of the the uh the, the limitations of traditional radar systems not having any blind spot and also having very high resolution so just to give you an idea of how this technology is being deployed currently i want to talk to you for a couple of our latest trials so this was a uh, trial we did with uh, Mythos AI. So they're an American-based startup and they're deploying uh, autonomous vessels for surveying. They combine high-resolution radar data with camera data for perception. You can clearly see in the image on the top, the radar returns detailed images of the infrastructure along the river, which leads into the Port of Monroe. So another slight use case of, of this data was uh, on, on the bottom right image. So this is a, you can see in this image, we can detect small vessels such as sailing boats that don't have the AIS data. So this, is a, this, can, this can solve a real world problem today. It can help operators today, uh, particularly in poor lighting and foggy conditions. And in this application, the technology is working more akin to an ADAS system that's common in uh, vehicles such as lane assist or, 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 or drive or lane assist or um, auto braking, which has been proven to reduce the number of incidents on the road by, by almost 40%.
So in the second application, so alongside uh, applications where high resolution uh, sensing is supporting captains on board, we're also seeing a push towards remote uh, operation centers as a kind of next step for autonomy. And then not only does it provide that kind of stepping stone towards full autonomy, but it also improves the safety by removing the humans from the dangerous offshore environments and improves efficiency and smoother crew cha changeovers as well. So this was a an ongoing project we've got with ABB and Keppel. So they were verifying the next level of vessel autonomy using the radar as part of their collision avoidance, um, situational awareness and their maneuver and control. So while the camera is sufficient when the weather is good and performs very, very well, ABB have used the high resolution radar as a redundancy to provide a reliable backbone to the system to put in poor weather conditions, unlocking 24 hour operation. So this is a really good example where the strengths of camera data, i.e. high angular resolution, uh, excellent color definition can be successfully fused with the strengths of high resolution radar, i.e. great range resolution and reliable performance across a very wide range of conditions. So other than object detection, the attributes of high resolution ra uh, radar such as range and, and resolution also mean that it's a suitable sensor for radar based uh, positioning. So i.e. the use of radar as a positioning aid to GNSS um, systems when GNSS is poor. So in this example, we were working with BAE systems who required a robust positioning solution for their autonomous vessel to operate safely in congested waterways. So what they found was GNSS was not reliable enough to provide a reliable um, positioning along a portion of the Thames estuary. This is through a mixture of GPS denied zones such as bridges and near, and, and near larger buildings, but also there was an increased risk in jamming and spoofing due to the local population in and around London. So we did a trial with them and we were able to successfully uh, show that along the 24 mile stretch of river, we were able to position to a accuracy of around 10 centimeters purely on radar scans using the radar as a map and then correlating our position back to it to a map. So one of the other things we found when we, we did we did this test is that actually radar maps are also very lightweight. So we were, we were the maps for per kilometer are about 10 to 20 megabytes. Um, and with the radar maps being fairly resilient over time, um, the overall cost of operating a system will be low because there's less in the in the way of um, uh, infrastructure costs for the for the data storage, but also uh, there would be less mapping overhead, so in, in the degradation in the map wouldn't be so much. So that's just another example use case of high resolution radars, particularly in and around uh, inshore and, and nearshore applications. So through these use cases, we're showing that the high resolution radars have a place within the maritime perception system. So combining the resolution of LIDAR and the range and robustness of uh, marine radar. However, we definitely don't feel like a, a single sense solution is the answer. And like with every system in robotics, it's a fusion of multiple technologies will be the ultimate choice. So our view is the winning combination is the use of a long range traditional radar, which has a proven track record in any marine system and will provide long range detections for large vessels in open areas. A 360 degree vision system is a must. It provides excellent angular resolution and color information for vessel classification. And then if we fuse in with a high resolution radar, high update rate, um, we can fill the blind spot that the traditional radar leaves, um, providing detailed returns of small vessels and infrastructure for safe navigation and provides a redundancy to the 360 degree vision system and also supports a really reliable range, res uh, range information in, in weather conditions. So at Nav NavTech, we, we do acknowledge that uh, with all different technologies will have their relative merits. But one thing that we do know with all new technologies, the barrier to adopting any new technology um, it, uh, it is, it is the ease at which engineering teams can integrate with pre-existing systems. So at NavTech, we really do prioritize making it easy for developers to use our kit. So we do this for a number of ways. So one of the one of the uh, easiest ways is the fact that we have a 360 degree scanning system, which means a single radar provides a complete coverage. Um, we also uh, have an open SDK, which enables uh, people to access our raw spectrum data um, and, and gives ultimate control over how they, they use the, the data. We also have some plug and play integration. So we've got compatibility with popular software packages like ROS, and also our radar is compatible with um, the shelf trackers like Cambridge Pixar who, who, who manufacture a fantastic um, tracker and that means that from a, from a customer perspective we're pretty flexible in terms of either offering a full system or just a part of a system that can be built upon. And then lastly with a single radar system with, 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 um, with, with simple integration we have fewer cabling, uh, fewer ca uh, calibration and complexities and it ultimately leads to um, fewer failure points and easier, easier maintenance. 
Now, while we can supply radars on their own, our experience has led us to believe that people often need more than just a supplier. So beyond the census we, we offer, we firmly believe in fostering collaborative relationships with our clients. So we understand that successful projects are not solely determined by the products themselves, but also by the nature at which the partnership was established. So with this in mind, we encourage you to consider the following questions as you evaluate potential technology partners. So firstly, do they collaborate or simply deliver? So a true technology partner actively seeks to collaborate with you. And at NavTech, we look to seek and understand your unique challenges and goals. Do they have full control over their product? And can they tailor the solution to your needs? So again, at NavTech, we design, manufacture, and build all of the radar within our, in, in our design office in Oxford. And we can provide bespoke solutions and modifications to fit your application. And then what's, what's their approach to innovation? So as, as a technology partner, NavTech is committed to innovation and staying ahead. So we invest heavily in R&D and we look to bring the latest radar technology to enhance the operation. And then another one is knowledge transfer. So beyond delivering products, we also ensure that you are equipped with the, late, with the knowledge to optimize the technology for your use case. So we want you to become the radar expert as well. And then lastly, is it a long-term relationship? So suppliers focus on transactions, partners focus on relationships. We focus on our commitments around long-term support, maintenance, and adapting the solutions to your evolving needs. So with that said, if you'd like to utilize high resolution radars within your own development project, we would love to work in partnership with you. So as I say, we're a specialist radar company. We focus purely on radar sensors and we set up with dedicated teams, application engineers support you on every stage of, of the journey. So we, it's very usual for us to work on proof of concepts through our loan radars and then we'll support you as you as you build out pilot projects and hopefully roll it out into a full operation. So do get in touch with us and we can understand, help you understand how to apply our high resolution radars into your ship design. And then we can help you kind of implement that and you can join our system of our ecosystem of early developers.